بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, Cherisher and Sustainer of the world the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment All praise is due to Allah and his peace and blessing be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his pure family, his very companions and all those who follow them with right choices and good deeds until the day of judgment, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, uh, Allah Almighty mentioned in the Holy Quran some of the beautiful descriptions about the Holy Quran and the reason for its revelation and the relationship between a believer and the Holy Quran. Today we are discussing something slightly related to that. The first concept is all Muslims agree that the Quran is the last divine message from God Almighty to humanity. And in it there is guidance and mercy to the believers. There is guidance also for all mankind. The Holy Quran is the criterion between right and wrong, between truth and falsehood. The Holy Quran is the word of Allah Almighty, the message from Allah Almighty to each and every one of us. The Holy Quran includes what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love. The Holy Quran includes a road map for you in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Allah Almighty also mentioned that the Holy Quran is the mention and honor of this nation in this world and in the hereafter. The more this, the followers of Islam, the more Muslims adhere by the Holy Quran, follow the Holy Quran, practice the Holy Quran in their life, the more they benefit from the Holy Quran in this world and in the hereafter. A common mistake among many Muslims nowadays, recite the Holy Quran only in occasions. Marriage ceremony, opening a, a new business for example, having a festival and so on, start mashallah with the recitation from the Holy Quran. Good, this is a good thing. But the main goal of the Holy Quran, the main aim of the Holy Quran is guidance. To understand it and practice it in your life. Not only to recite it during occasions. Now, we'll speak about the relationship between a Muslim and the Holy Quran shortly after, uh, inshallah. But first, speaking about the Holy Quran, <coughs> There is something that is linked with the Holy Quran, which is the month that we are in. The month of Ramadan is closely related to the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the Holy Quran was revealed in this month. And Allah Almighty mentioned that it was revealed in a blessed night in it. And very specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that it was Laylatul Qadr. Now, interestingly, the relationship between the Holy Quran and Ramadan is not only at the time of revelation but it continues throughout the life. We can see this between Muslims, mashallah, in Ramadan, they recite the Holy Quran more or less, more than at, at any time throughout their life. Whether it is outside the Salah or even in the Salah, they start reciting the Holy Quran much more. There is a relationship. And we have many of the Salafs and early Muslims who used to dedicate their time in Ramadan to the Holy Quran. They will stop every other thing that they do, every class, every subject, every knowledge and they will concentrate on the recitation of the Holy Quran. There is a basis for this. The basis is actually the action of the Messenger وسلم, himself. So this is a type of sunnah to dedicate most of your time to the Holy Quran in Ramadan. The Messenger وسلم, Jibreel وسلم, used to descend upon him every Ramadan and they will review the Holy Quran to each other. Recite the Holy Quran to each other in Ramadan, every Ramadan. In the last Ramadan, in the life of the Messenger وسلم, they reviewed it twice. This was an indication to the Messenger وسلم, that this will be the last Ramadan that he will have in this world. The next Ramadan he will be with his Lord. So there is a relationship between Muslims and Ramadan uh, and the Holy Quran then continues not only in this world but also in the hereafter. Your relationship with Quran and Ramadan does not stop in this world, continues in the hereafter. Why? Because the Messenger وسلم, that said that the Holy Quran and fasting will come in the hereafter and they will seek permission to intercede for you. Subhanallah. The Messenger وسلم, said, 
It's in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hereafter. Your recitation of the Holy Quran, the time you dedicated to Quran, and your fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will intercede for you. The Messenger وسلم, said that fasting and the Quran comes to intercede for the servant that is in the hereafter. Fasting will say, O oh Lord, I have prevented him from food and drink throughout the day. So allow me to intercede for him. And the Quran will say, O oh Lord, I prevented him from sleep at night. He is standing in prayer and recitation in Taraweeh and Tahajjud in Ramadan. So permit me to intercede for him. And Allah Almighty will permit them to intercede for you. So it's a very lengthy relationship between the Quran and Ramadan, never ending. And that is why each Ramadan, you should not be indifferent towards the Quran. You should dedicate more of your time to Quran than normal. Dedicate more of your time to Quran than normal. Now, how do you benefit from uh, Ramadan? The first thing, we have two advices from the Messenger وسلم, about such things, about the actions during special occasions. The Messenger وسلم, first told us, take from the actions what you are able to bear. Do not overburden yourself. Make it reasonable. Do not put a very extreme goal for yourself. No. It should be a high goal. It should be ambitious, but it should not be difficult. It should not cause a burden to you. It should not disturb your, 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 your life. So this goal, the Messenger of Allah is saying, that is a real life in every relationship, in every action, and most likely in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make a goal for yourself that you can actually do, you can achieve. We have many people, mashallah, in the beginning of Ramadan, he hears, mashallah, some of the Salaf used to recite the Holy Quran more than once in Ramadan. Some of them will recite the Holy Quran 10 times in Ramadan. We have among the Salaf some people who used to recite the Holy Quran every single day in Ramadan. And we have among the Salaf people who used to recite the Quran twice every day and every night in Ramadan. That is very ambitious. But can you do that? Even if you will try, probably you will do it for a day and two and then you will be exhausted. And then you will stop, which is a bad thing. Even till today, we have many. A person was telling me the other day about an old woman that he knows himself that she is, she used to recite the Holy Quran every single day in her life. Every single day. She said. And by the way, it doesn't take much. About 10 hours with slow recitation. If you are a fast reciter, it will take about 8 hours. But that is dedication actually. Now, before jumping to such high aim, especially in Ramadan, you find many people, mashallah, in the beginning of Ramadan, they are ambitious. And they say, mashallah, yes, I'm going to memorize or recite the Holy Quran 10 times this Ramadan. Then he starts, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, and then he slows down, and then he stops, or probably goes to, okay, let me just make it five times. Then just make it three, just make it two. Let me just finish the Holy Quran at least once. Great, and maybe he will finish, maybe not. The main reason is from the beginning, he overburdened himself. Don't do that. So the advice of the Messenger وسلم, be realistic in your goals. You have many other duties for sure. Most of you are working. So you don't have that much time. You don't have much free time in your life. So how much can you dedicate to the Holy Quran? Half an hour, one hour, more, less? Make it a goal. At what time? After Fajr, for example, a very specific and important time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned specifically in the Holy Quran. You are still fresh, relaxed. You, you, you haven't gone into the worries and the problems of the day. And the recitation at Fajr is very important. So if you can dedicate half an hour more or less after each Fajr, this would be very interesting. Second thing the Messiah <laughs> said about the best and most beloved action to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those that are consistent. You should be consistent. So make a reasonable goal and be consistent. Those are the two golden advice from the Messenger Wasallam. Interestingly, they work for anything in your life. Not only for the Holy Quran. This is actually how the achievers achieve most of their achievements. It's not only jumping at once on something. No, you need to be dedicated and continue to do that. Now, the relationship between you and the Holy Quran, the first thing is looking in the Mus'haf itself. Looking in the Mus'haf and 
with trying to understand the meanings of it, by the way. So not merely just looking, this is disputed among scholars, whether merely looking without actually reciting, without anything. Is it considered a worship or not? So scholars dispute this. But I, I'm not aware of any single source to prove that it's a worship uh, by itself. But looking at the Holy Quran with respect and, and, and honor and respecting it because it's the, it contains the message from Allah Almighty, for sure this is a, a good thing to do and this is a, a form of ibadah to respect the Holy Quran and honor the Holy Quran. But reciting the Holy Quran and listening to the Holy Quran are two different things that are important every day. Listening to the Holy Quran, trying to give the meaning uh, of the Holy Quran, the message of the Holy Quran in your heart, not only in your ears. You find many people, mashallah, nowadays seeking only nice voice. It doesn't matter what he is saying. It doesn't matter whether he is speaking about hell or paradise. The sound is nice, fine. So it's just the rhythm. You don't get any from that. You need to carry the meanings into your recitation and in your listening to the Holy Quran and understanding. That is how it affects, that is how you benefit from it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this beautiful relationship between the believers and listening to the Holy Quran or reciting the Holy Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that eventually their hearts feel tranquil and soft when they listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran. It changes the person. Second thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that it increases their iman. It increases the, their faith. And they are listening and reciting to the Holy Quran. Third point is that you will be getting lots of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty knows how much reward you will be getting. But the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the minimum. For each letter in the Holy Quran that you are reciting, you will get 10 rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each letter. Not each verse, not each word, each letter from the Holy Quran. You'll get 10 rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So merely reciting one single page, it will take you one minute, two minutes, and you will get thousands of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that can be multiplied further, but this is the minimum. Furthermore, don't forget that paradise is many, many levels. It's not only one place. Paradise, mashallah, we will all be in paradise, one place. No, it's not like that. Paradise is many levels, and the differences between each level and the other are huge, enormous. In one narration, there is a travel period of 100 years between each level and the next level. And in another narration, 500 years. Each level, and we are talking about thousands upon thousands of Levels, Allah Almighty knows how many. Nobody knows. Allah Almighty gave us an example. He said, look around you how we differentiated them in this world. How some of them are more, having more in this world. There are some people who are extremely poor. They don't have anything. And there are people who are extremely wealthy. What is the difference between them? Little or much? So much. So many different levels in between, right? Allah Almighty says, but the hereafter is more levels and more differentiation. Much, much more. So there'll be many people in paradise, yes, great, alhamdulillah, but paradise are levels, so you should aim high. Now the levels in paradise, there are hundreds of years between each level and the other, but what about in this world? How can you get a second level in this world? Memorize one single verse from the Holy Quran. That will give you one full level in paradise. One single verse. For each single verse in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty will raise you one full level in paradise. The Messenger Sallallahu said, it will be said to the person who has the Holy Quran, recite and rise. Because your place, your level, your position in paradise is with the last verse that you recite. For each one, get it. Such a great reward and gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you should not waste. So that is why in Ramadan you should not be indifferent to the Holy Quran. It should be a specific thing and that is why you should schedule it in your, as a priority. A priority. Quran in Ramadan is a priority. It should be for any true Muslim who is seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking high rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, it is a bless and happiness in this world and the hereafter. It is not meant to make your life miserable or difficult. It is the exact opposite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'ana litashqa. 
Taha, we have not revealed the Holy Quran to you so that you will be miserable. No. We have not revealed it for this goal. It is the exact opposite. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the other verses, as guidance and mercy to the believers. Guidance and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you happy in this world and successful in the hereafter. Now, there is also a duty upon each one of us to spread this information and to spread the importance of the Quran with his family, with his children. There is a right for your children upon you. It is your duty towards them to teach them the Holy Quran. To make them get some part from the Holy Quran. Inshallah, most people nowadays know about the importance of knowledge. And most people nowadays insist on educating their children, which is a great thing and very important in Islam. However, sadly, most of them make all their consideration, 100% of their time, 100% of their payments, 100% of their efforts toward learning worldly matters only. If it is beneficial, it's a good thing. But it does not compare to the hereafter. At least make a portion to the hereafter. Something that will benefit your child, not only in this world, but in the hereafter. In the real life, the eternal life for him. So let him get some parts from the Holy Quran. That is how he will get the reward. That is how you will also be rewarded in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nowadays, alhamdulillah, Allah Almighty facilitated this to humanity. We have so many facilitation nowadays. We are living the prime of, of, of life for humanity. But sadly, most people are misusing it or just wasting their time with it. You have the ability now to carry a copy of the Holy Quran in your pocket. At the time of the Salaf, it was extremely important to get one single page from the Holy Quran or just to copy a piece of that. They didn't even have paper at that time. And they used to dedicate their time. Some of them will travel a lengthy for many days just to learn one single verse from the Holy Quran. One single verse from the Holy Quran. And now, alhamdulillah, you have the abilities. And we also have, mashallah, in all countries around the world, and especially, mashallah, in this country, you have Islamic centers and you have learning centers and memorization centers of the Holy Quran all over there. In every area, mashallah, you have them. Most of them are free of charge as well. Most of them are free of charge as well. So I said, at least the case of time. They are, they are for children and for adults, for males and for females. No excuse for anyone nowadays to be lazy. Laziness is you only. Else, alhamdulillah, everything is feasible. Everything is there. We have even competitions. We have rewards, great rewards for any people who compete in these uh, things about the Holy Quran. That is why you need to make it a goal for yourself, for your children, and everyone around you to get as much from the Holy Quran as you can. As the Messenger of Allah said, said, the, the Quran is the banquet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty is inviting you over. This is what He is offering you. When you are invited, mashallah, to a wealthy person or a prince or something, what does he offer you? All types of goodness, right? Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering you the Holy Quran. That is why the Messenger of Allah said, so accept the offer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come closer to the banquet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take your portion from it. This is your right. This is for you. You will know about this in the hereafter. You will know about this in the grave when you are alone. You will know about this when you are standing for judgment. That is when they will come and they will intercede for you. That is why we pray to Allah Almighty to grant us the Holy Quran and the memorization of the Holy Quran and the understanding of the Holy Quran and the practice of the Holy Quran. We pray to Allah Almighty to make the Holy Quran intercede for us in the hereafter and to be our leader and guide to paradise, inshallah, and to the highest place in paradise with the Messenger وسلم, and the companions. We pray to Allah Almighty to make the fasting intercedes for us in the hereafter, inshallah. We pray to Allah Almighty to forgive all our sins, what is apparent and what is secret, what we know and we do not know, what we did unintentionally or unintentionally. We pray to Allah Almighty to make us among those who are exempted from hellfire in this month. We pray to Allah Almighty to make us in this month and in this day among those who are exempted from fire and those who are successful and those who are winners in all levels inshallah with all rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.